Okay, so today I'm going to be here talking about a build that I consider to be one of the core future meta builds uh, when they do change Sentry Shotgun and possibly shotguns in general, which is coming as confirmed that it's going to be adjusted. I don't exactly know how yet. Uh, if anyone has any more information on that, please post it in the comments below. But we do know that there's going to be a change, and my response to that is that, okay, since everyone is either running Reclaimer or Sentry Shotgun or maybe even Striker Shotgun, uh, it's more of a fringe build, but it works. Uh, in the dark zone, if they make a core change to shotguns, everything's going to get thrown into the air. So I personally think that Alpha Bridge and Deadeye will become the new meta, uh, hands down, because of their just sheer power when min-max correctly. And this is my, you know, target build. I already have a Deadeye build that I've gone into depth, you know, over. And But today, I haven't really made a super successful Alpha Bridge build. I've made ones that function fine, but this one right here is just fantastic. And I wanted to make a full, in-depth build video for it and have a lot of gameplay uh, showcasing what it can do when used properly. So I'm going to start by talking about all my Alpha Bridge pieces, then why I have two high ends. Then I'm going to talk about my guns and their talents, because that is extremely important with Alpha Bridge. And then I'll show like my talents and my skills and my character sheet. So first things first, looking at my stats, if you look at my primary DPS, it's actually up at 157,000. I have 494,000 toughness, almost 500,000, and 25,000 skill power. Now this is while using the Vigorous chess piece, and when I talk about the high ends, I'll talk about switching back and forth between Vigorous and uh, Reckless, but... Right now I'm going to talk about the Alpha Bridge pieces. So starting with the backpack, uh, I do have skill power on my backpack, but one could easily switch this if you are running in a team and you have a dedicated skill power build that's going to have the pulse or the smart cover uh, and your teammates are capable of healing you, you can switch this uh, skill power over to critical hit damage because if you do that, it's a large chunk and if you're already using a max out pulse that you're getting from a teammate, getting the critical hit damage is going to be more important than getting the skill power in terms of just raw damage output potential. Now, if you're looking for survivability, you definitely want skill power. If you're going to be the one running Pulse, you're definitely going to want skill power. Um, it is the best in slot to run skill power on your backpack, but you know there are a variety of reasons why you could run critical hit damage as well. So that's the reason I have this instead of crit hit damage, uh, but it is viable as well. This is a 240, so I also wanted to make sure to, to tell you guys that this build is not fully min-max. This is a kind of higher high medium style of the build this is a, reaching a little bit higher than you know the mid median potential that the build has um if you fully min max this build it's nearly unstoppable even in the current meta so when they take shotguns out of the equation um which they probably will you know when a nerf comes in uh, and i actually have to say i was really happy with the state of the game that was one of the most down to earth kind of genuine feeling state of the games that i've seen from them and i'm i have to actually apologize for, for how much negative criticism i was throwing their way in last night's stream because I was so frustrated hearing that nothing had been done, but that was a really down-to-earth, genuine way to address things, and they, they know about all these issues. And the way they said it in the beginning, and they were right, we play the same game as you guys, and that's true. I mean, they're playing the same game, so they see the same things. And, you know, there is a lot of people clamoring for changes, and I think they will listen to that, and I am very hopeful for the future. But anyways, this is not a fully min-max build. When it is fully min-max, it's going to steamroll pretty much everything in your path, even from a solo play perspective, if used properly. So that's my backpack. Uh, I'll actually go into depth about the other attributes. Burn resistance is nice in PvP a little bit but not critical, and then support station range and secret mine explosion radius are both just completely useless. I don't want those at all. I would much prefer first aid self-heal or, you know, pulse critical hit damage or something like that. That would help a lot more. Moving on to my mask, I'm going to try and speed up the process a little bit and talk really quickly about each attribute. I have skill power on my mask. You could offer critical hit chance, but that is actually completely overshadowed by the fact that a pulse can easily cap you out at 60%, and the 60% cap is a hard cap. You cannot go beyond it. So getting critical hit chance is only good if you can't achieve the critical hit chance cap, uh, if you can, then you want skill power for sure. It's going to help with your heal. It's going to help with your the duration of your skills and the recharge time, all that different stuff. It's a really great firearms role in this, uh, but support station healing speed is not that good, and disorient resistance isn't going to help me very much. My pads have a really nice chunk of critical hit damage at 21%. They're really great stamina pads with 748. I like these pads over the ones right here, which are actually just a slightly better roll because they have increased kill XP, and I de-rank all the time in the Dark Zone, and I know for a fact that they are going to up the DZ rank at some point in the future, past 99. Um, actually, I shouldn't say I know that for a fact, but I strongly believe that, and I think that they definitely will. I don't know if it's the 125 or what it is, but they will also, I believe, put in more blueprints in the DZ, and I'm actually de-ranking down to like 60-something. So for my purposes, increased kill XP is really nice, and anybody that's trying to reach 99, it's going to be good to put that on your pads as well. Um, maybe some shock resistance would be good, and these right here don't have that either, so that's why I've opted to run for, you know, the 51% the increased kill XP. Pulse duration is nice on these, that's really good, and a really nice stamina roll, so that's why I'm using those pads. Now talking about the two high ends, I'm going to start with the Savage Gloves. I use these because 
And actually, I'm going to touch on gear score really quickly. The people that are running around with 255 gear score and kicking everyone that tries to join their mission or their incursion or whatever they're doing just because they don't have 255 gear score, they're idiots, okay? They're less intelligent human beings than basically the majority of other players in the game because there are certain high-end pieces, okay? Specifically when using Alpha Bridge uh, with your alternate gun and things like that. And there's specific reasons why running a lower gear score is better than running a 255 gear score. Now, that being said... Uh, the gear score is a loose indicative, you know, tool for determining how strong a player is. So if I have 255, I could be extremely strong, but that's a very big could. And there's a very large question mark on the end of that statement. So I have these 229 Savage Gloves. They have the Town Savage. They have a decent stamina roll. I, I, it could be higher, but they have the perfect trio of major attributes of critical hit damage, SMG damage, and critical hit chance. So that's really nice. They don't really have a great skill attribute, but it's okay. And the gloves get, you know, they up my DPS potential quite a bit, and it's not actually registered on the meter. After that, I'm going to talk about my chest piece. Again, there are reasons to run high ends, and there are reasons why people's gear score gravitates towards, you know, 248 instead of 255. That's because they have one or two of these items equipped, and it's lowering their gear score, but for a very specific reason. So I have the vigorous chest piece, and as you'll see in the clip, I can actually face tank shotguns sometimes. I can go head to head and, and fight them in straight up trading battles and win with this build. So I think it's very effective and I actually have the ability to switch back and forth. So I have the vigorous chest piece on now, which brings me up to almost 500,000 toughness with the booster shot heal when I'm using this. But I can also switch very easily over to the reckless chest piece. I can get more increased damage for longer periods of time since it's active at all times. I actually lower my toughness down uh, by about 70,000. And in the end, I actually, you know, lower it by more because I'm increased, you know, increasing the incoming damage by 10%. So as a result, I'm not actually up at 424. I'd say I'm probably up at around 380. But at the same time, uh, in a fight where I am going to be the only damage dealer, like depending on my squad composition, a very quick change is going from super tanky, still high DPS to not quite as tanky, super, super high DPS. And it's a really easy change and I have all the, you know, the mods and the pieces to do it. So I like doing that. And I can switch on the fly to help my team. And that's another reason why the versatility in this build is extremely high. So moving on to my guns, I'm going to talk about these. These are extremely critical to uh, Alpha Bridge builds. So the PP-19 is what I'm using for my main gun for a variety of reasons. And with the vigorous chest piece, as you can see, I'm just barely under 10,000 know, base damage. Uh, augmented by plus 1,200 from my magazine. And then I have deadly, unforgiving, hurried. Now hurry does function almost exactly like Firecrest if you land like up to 6 or 7 critical strikes. Uh, it functions the same way, it does the same thing, and I think it's a very valuable talent with Alpha Bridge in particular. I kind of had low expectations of it in the past, but now that I've finally found a PP-19 that works and paired it with a good alternate SMG, I'm experiencing great things and I'm very happy with it. Uh, moving on, I have Brutal, Responsive, and Competent in my secondary, and as you can see, my secondary is a 204. Now, there's a reason for this as well. I am not, I'm specifically intentionally not running a 229 secondary gun because the talent requirements on a lower gear score gun are lower. So 2580 for Brutal instead of 2825. And this allows me to have 2613 firearms still activate every single gun talent that I want on my primary weapon. So I don't actually need to achieve 2825 to have Brutal on a 229 weapon. This is intentional. But the result is my gear score goes down. So I've actually experienced, well, for whatever reasons, I was joining groups earlier today and getting kicked because of my gear score. And I was thinking to myself, I am better than and probably will be better than these players ever will be. Uh, that's not always the case. There are a lot of people that are way better than me at this game. But the people that are kicking you based on your gear score not being 255 are not among them. Okay, those are the types of players that just don't really have any game theory knowledge. And they're not really thinking about these different angles and the reasoning by behind why you may not have 255 gear score. So that's my little rant. I'm sorry about that. You know, kind of out of context, but that's the reasoning behind it. Now, one thing to talk about is that responsive and um, competent pair very nicely together. If I'm popping booster shot, especially, I'm going to get 15% from booster shot, 13.5% from competent, 13.5% from responsive. So 27% on top of the 15%. I'm getting huge amounts of percent weapon damage bonuses, and then not to mention the fact that if I have one health segment gone, that's an additional 10%. If I have two, that's an additional 24. I can easily get up to, to nearly 100% bonus damage. And if I'm in an ally smart cover, I'm well over 100% bonus damage with all the right snapshotted bonuses procced. This is a really fantastic build when used properly. Uh, I'll have a large amount of gameplay coming up for you guys to see it. And sorry it's taking so long for the description, but you know, there's a lot to cover. So moving on to my skills, I'm going to talk about those. While I'm in a squad, I currently am running, you know, Pulse with Conceal. I think it's really good for mitigating enemies' damage, and it's overall an underutilized skill. 
does still give critical hit chance and critical hit damage, but not as much as if you use Tactical Scanner. Um, if I was running by myself, I would be using Tactical Scanner for sure, but I'm not, and I'm actually lucky enough to have a dedicated squad. And on a quick note, like a shout out, if you guys are struggling to find a squad, check out the Facebook community below. It's fantastic. It's up over 2,600 members. Really great place to find help, build feedback, to squad up, to find people to run with. It makes the game a better place, I assure you, and it's going fantastically. So check that out if you don't really have a dedicated squad to run with. For my secondary, I am running heal, and when I'm using Reckless, I will use Overdose, and when I'm using Vigorous, I will use Booster Shot. Now, the reasoning behind that is I can still get an overheal with Booster Shot, and I get the, the damage mitigation and the unlisted damage boost as well. Um, and I'm going to be popping it quite frequently, also proccing competent and, you know, giving myself that Booster Shot bonus as well. So, it's important to switch back and forth. If you don't have Vigorous, don't run Booster Shot, but if you do, then you're freed up to do that, and it's a really great skill. Moving on to my talents, I have triage. Whenever I'm in a squad, absolutely, I'm always running this. Um, this is actually a byproduct. Wildfire is left over from when I was using something, uh, you know, a few minutes ago, just testing something else. So you're not going to run that. But triage when you're in a squad, for sure. And then you're going to have critical save, absolutely, because that damage resistance is going to help you specifically against shotgunners whenever you're popping a med kit. And it is confirmed that this works with other healing methods as well. So it's a very valuable talent to run. I'm running Strike Back because I want my skills as fast as possible, not only because it's going to help me heal more often and get the booster shot proc more often, but also, you know, use those skills and then get competent active more often. So Strike Back is really valuable as well. But you could opt for something else like tech support, especially if you're running something like Smart Cover and you in your squad are responsible for the Smart Cover, then you definitely want tech support. My fourth and final skill is One is None. Now this does cause weapon jams and it's very obnoxious when that happens, but it still is very good. And with the large magazine size of the PP-19, this is going to be even more effective. When you are landing those headshots, extending the large magazine, you can you can do damage right through their heals. If they pop a med kit, doesn't matter. You can do damage right through that. If they pop a heal and they start moving, if you're diligent and you're, you know, you have high dexterity and you land those headshots still, you're going to kill them right through that overheal. So it's a very nice talent to run, but if you're not about it and if you're not the one running pulse, then I would suggest switching it over to precision or something like that. Um, you know, it's really user's preference what you want to use in that fourth slot. So that's about it. I'm going to switch over and run through my character panel really quickly. Uh, my weapon damage, that's, that can't be right. Let's, let's get this all set. All right, I'm on the right gun. And now we'll run through. Uh, that is right, so it's 11.221 for, for weapon damage uh, on the base. Critical hit chance is 16.5. After Savage, it's much higher. And with a pulse, with my teammate's max L pulse, I will cap out. Critical hit damage is up at 180. That could be up over 200% if I were to switch my backpack. Again, that's a viable option if you're going to be the primary damage dealer and you don't really care as much about survivability uh, or utility to your teammates. And then headshot damage is just under 100%. So I could easily get this up over 200. That'd be a really good thing to do if I was you know, locked into one primary role. But I like the versatility, so that's why I don't have that. And I am going to quickly scroll through the rest of my character panel so you guys can pause it if you want to see any specific attribute. Once I've done that, I'm going to kick it over some gameplay. So now that we've done that, I'm going to throw it to there. I have about 12 minutes. This manhunt was like 26 to 30 minutes long, so I didn't include the entire thing. But I'm going to talk over it um, and let you guys see how the build performs. Okay, so here we are in these underground, you know, subway tunnels. This is one of our locations of choice for fighting, and I'm going to demonstrate how the build functions. I do not have Smart Cover active, and as you can see, I just melted him with 10,000, you know, hits to the head extremely quickly. Uh, before there's a whole barrage of comments like, oh, you're only this strong because of smart cover and things like that. There's a reason we have this UI tooltip right here that shows what bonuses are active on your character at any one time. It exists so that you can take footage like this and see what is active on my character at what times for what fights and how strong I am with and without certain things. Yeah, it requires a little bit of work and some rewinding and things like that, but it's valuable to do. And that's why, um, you know, I have so much footage here so that people can see a variety of kills in a variety of ways. Now, half the time, sure, I'm going to have bonuses active, but that's what this game is about. It's about bonuses, it's about smart cover and pulse and team composition, um, you know, immunizer countering shock turrets and shock turrets countering people rolling around and bleed countering people who run, all these different things working together. So, you know, dead eye counters, shotguns, positionally, a whole bunch of different stuff. And in the end, this game is really about just adjusting your tactics and, and having a diverse squad composition. And that's what we're de you know, demonstrating here. And I would strongly suggest anyone who thinks that it's unrealistic to roll with a squad of four to check out our Facebook community. We have a Discord. We have a band. We have an Instagram. We have a Twitter. There's a whole bunch of different ways to match with other players in the upper echelon community. It's really fantastic. So let's get back into the gameplay here. Um, I'll commentate on a few things that are happening. I, I can melt players extremely quickly, but it all really relies on my ability to hit those headshots because I am you know, relying on Brutal, 
uh, my high headshot damage as well as my high critical strike damage to you know melt players extremely fast as well as you know proccing all those different weapon percent bonus weapon percentage damage bonuses at the same time uh, this guy right here was actually being a little bit squirrely he was running around behind us and we couldn't kill him um, getting me to waste ammo most of this video is actually taken after about 15 minutes of fighting almost the entire server initially anyways and that's why I'm so low on ammo and I'm relying on kills to feed myself more ammo as you can see there um, I'm getting you know really quick kills uh, getting more and more ammo and I'm hovering around 200 to 300 rounds of ammunition in my backpack which I oftentimes I have to actually switch over to my pistol for a little bit I get a cup I don't know if they're on you know video here but I did get a couple actual pistol kills in head-to-heads which is really funny um, and you know it just helped me keep going and get those ammo drops so I'm hoping that more ammo drops in the future but I don't know if it will for a fact uh, but yeah this guy right here he was definitely skirting on the edge of our peripherals in the back he was, you know, being a nuisance. He did get a kill or two here and there a while ago. Not in this footage or, you know, anytime. He did get a kill soon after, I think, because we were kind of not paying attention. We had stopped running off our timers. But he was displaying some pretty good tactics. And from a solo play perspective, if you are intent on participating in PvP, what he was doing is a good way to do that. Um, split the enemy team, fragment them, you know, be a thorn in their side. Uh, it's quite effective. Don't just run in bullheaded and get killed because you're probably going to be facing higher firepower you know, uh, than what you have, because they do have four people, they have eight skills at their disposal. The composition we're running actually runs one player without, you know, heal, and um, as a result of that, you can have five out of eight skills freed up for damage and things like that. There's a lot of advanced tactics uh, that I can go into, talking about, for instance, looking at Eker's character screen right now, he has pulse and smart cover, instead of having a heal, and that may seem kind of blasphemous to some people, but that's actually a really good way to go when used properly, and we find a lot of success with it. So as you can see here, um, from a numbers perspective, they can't really do much because even if they had 20 people, there's only about the first three or four people in that tunnel can fight at any one time because, you know, the, the hitboxes on bodies block, you know, all the bullets that are fired. So, and also, as you can see, I do plenty of damage. So even from medium range, I can drop them extremely fast. If I was landing more headshots than body shots, I would drop them even faster. This is the first, like, highly competitive Alpha Bridge build that I've made. I made functional ones in the past. Talked about the Alpha MP7 build. I still have that build, uh, but I won't be using it. This will replace that because it's done much better and has better talents active at any one time. Um, I'm really happy with it. I think there's a lot of potential for improvement with it. Uh, at the same time, since there are some 240 pieces and, you know, maybe there are some, some better talents, you know. Some people may think that instead of Unforgiving, they want Fierce or Vicious or things like that. And those would be good talents to run. They would increase your damage. Uh, most of the time with Vicious, it would kind of be the same, you know, vein as Unforgiving in, in the fact that it's conditional, it wouldn't be active the entire fight, but Fierce would be active the entire fight, so there's a lot of reasons why uh, some other, you know, talents might be prioritized by different people, but I think all these different weapon percentage damage bonuses are what make me so strong, and as you can see there, when I am, you know, dexterous enough to, to land the shots on the head, I'll get the kills extremely fast. I think I get another one here really, really quickly. Um, in a face-to-face -face with a shotgunner, I ended up killing him. I think that was a 14,000 crit to the head. Uh, when I snapshot all my bonuses correctly, I've hit 20,000 to the head before on a player. That's just when I bounce a smart cover, I have the pulse up, and then I just pop a skill. I pop my booster shot, and I'm good to go. Uh, and that's not actually that hard to do. A lot of people are going to say, well, you're never going to have all these things active at any one time in a fight. That's not necessarily true. I actually have all these bonuses active at the same time frequently. All it requires me to do is bounce smart cover and then pop my booster shot, and I'm good to go. And if the target is within 10 meters, that means responsive, competent, smart cover, uh, pulse. All these things are active at the same time, booster shot, and all those things on top of each other with the high headshot damage and the high critical strike damage is going to mean 20,000, over 20,000 to the head. And I can drop pretty much any player uh, while hitting strikes that high from, you know, medium range in about a quarter of a second. Because, you know, all it takes at that point is four, five bullets, six bullets, maybe seven bullets max if they're extremely tanky. Uh, and it just requires me to, to land those headshots. So this is, again, like I said, a, a very long clip of gameplay. I think the entire unedited manhunt was about 26, between 26 and 30 minutes. And, um... We were in the sewers or the, the subway system pretty much the entire time. Uh, it was a really fun time. There was some good PvP encounters with some other players. They clearly weren't that coordinated, but another reason why I chose to, to use this gameplay here is because I do face tank a couple shotguns sometimes. And as you can see, with 500,000 toughness, or just below that, and using booster shot and bouncing smart cover, the shotgun meta is not as um, dangerous as it previously was. 
Until I made this build, I kind of viewed it as, well, I either kill or be killed with a high damage shotgun build. That's not the case. You can actually counter them quite effectively. Um, as you can see there, just really high critical strikes. I landed a few headshots and it was over. My teammates are shooting as well, so before anyone goes and says, well, you don't actually know how effective this build is because your teammates are shooting too, that is true, but I am doing the bulk of the damage. I mean, if you just add up the values of all the strikes that I got to that player's head just then, I'm pretty sure it comes out to like well over 70,000, and um, that's most of a player's health pool. So uh, yes, we are team shooting. Yes, it is a, a four-man squad, um, but in reality, I am doing the bulk of the damage because that was my designated role for this clip. I was the one who was supposed to be doing damage. I was the one that was being, you know, buffed by my teammates. Uh, and it did revolve around getting me some footage for this build. Uh, it was quite successful. And I will continue to run this composition and this build. And I'll enjoy it. And it's, it's fantastic. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to preemptively talk about some of the points that people may raise. And, and in a good way. And talk about why some of them are valid. Some of them aren't. You know, the, the ups and downs of the build. One of the super, super bad negatives about this build is the ammo capacity. As you can see here, for the entire clip... I am hovering just barely over having zero bullets. And if I were to run out of bullets, I would have to switch both of my guns over to something else, probably a shotgun or maybe an LMG or who knows. Um, and then I would have ammo again, but this is not the same type of build. I can't just hit a button and then have ammo again for a secondary weapon type. And I don't actually have the shotguns on me at the moment to switch over to that. But I did want to talk about the versatility of that. If you have two shotguns that you're really, really happy with, all you have to do is go into your menu, switch those two shotguns in, and you have a functional M870 shotgun build that is competing with Sentry Shotgun, you know, the 5P Sentry meta. It competes with that very well, and you can just switch over to that. Uh, it doesn't have to be an SMG. The beauty of Alpha Bridge is that the, the versatility of adding those gun talents in opens up the door for a lot of creativity and a lot of different builds. And I do strongly believe that once they nerf shotguns, however they go about doing that, uh, that Alpha Bridge and Deadeye will step right into the spotlight as the prominent metagame builds, for sure. Now, I, I can't guarantee that. I guess I can't give you a 100% guarantee that that will happen, but everything that I've experienced in the game up till this point points to that being the case. I think that that will happen. I'm almost 100% positive, and um, I'm preparing for that. I have a functional Deadeye build. I have a functional, now, Alpha Bridge build that could be run with a shotgun or an SMG, uh, whichever I choose to, and I'm really excited about it. So if anyone has any questions about the build or things like that, please post them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, you know, to the best of my knowledge, uh, having played this game as much as I have, I, I do have a kind of a large bank of knowledge that I can hopefully dish out and help people with. If anyone's really looking for a squad, again, join the Facebook community. It's a great place to go. Uh, I think I saw 22,000 there on that player's head. I'm not positive. Uh, I was, it was playing really fast, but there's a lot, you know, you can hit absurd headshot crits. Uh, and that was without even smart cover as far as I can tell. Maybe that player wasn't armor capped. You never know. But especially encountering a player that doesn't have 75% mitigation with this build, you will just absolutely shred through their entire health bar in a, a fraction of a second. And it'll be a really satisfying experience, especially because I've been playing shotgun more and more lately just because of how broken it is. Um, but, you know, right here, I am face tanking a shotgun. Uh, he didn't land all of his shots. Maybe he would have dropped me, but right there, he landed a shot. I, again, I traded with him, and I came out on top, and it, was, and it was really fun. Booster Shot is one of the tools that allows me to do that, to combat that metagame. And uh, that's why I've titled, you know, the thumbnail of this future meta, because I believe that a build like this, something similar, as well as Deadeye, will be the future meta of this game. And I think preparing for that is going to be something, something really nice for, for players to do. Um, it's going to kind of come to a close here. I think we, we kill a couple more people and then we end up running off the manhunt. Um, but again, you know, this is just a really nice build. A lot of gameplay, you know, 14,000 crits there. Ended up dropping him. A uh, really good showcase. And that was by myself. So it was anyone that's wondering about if this build performs, it does perform. That was all done by myself without bonuses active other than just my own booster shot, which I can pop very frequently and take advantage of. There's timing involved. This is not a cookie cutter build where it's active all the time. You have to time these bonuses correctly. You have to use them at the right time to take your enemy off guard like that and then kill them. So it's um, it does require some strategy and, and overall timing. So I'm going to wrap it up there uh, really quickly. Anybody that wants to support the channel, uh, if you have any interest in that whatsoever, we appreciate it greatly. And there's links to do so in the description, such as the patron or just joining the Facebook community. Uh, participating in, in the community and discussion in general is a really great way as well. We want to thank all of our active members, our mods, and our admins. Um, as always, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you for supporting, and have a nice day.